And uh, I have a confession. I wrecked the month of October for those in Utah. Welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR astrophotography channel. So here it is. This is how I wrecked the month of October. Um, if you're new to astrophotography, you'll often hear people talk about how, uh, you know, or ask the question, who bought the new equipment when the clouds roll in? Well, for the month of October, <laughs> it was myself. Um, I have purchased the William Opt Optics Zenith Star 81. And it was funny enough because on October 1st, when this telescope arrived, <laughs> I got on uh, social media, shared it out in the groups that I belong to with uh, some of my fellow astrophotography friends uh, here in Utah. And I told them, well, no astrophotography for the month of October because I just got my telescope. And sure enough, when it came to New Moon weekend, <laughs> we were clouded out. And uh, it wrecked it. But let's take a look at um, this telescope and how I ended up here. Because, again, this channel is focused around simple star trackers like the Skygatter Pro or the Star Adventure that have an 11-pound payload. Now, I'm not going to do an unboxing or anything like that. And I'm not going to get into all the specific details yet on this telescope. But I am going to tell you how I got to this telescope or why I chose this telescope and the reason why I decided to do this and I'll save the the details for later is with Christmas coming up you may have family members that are asking what are you looking for for Christmas or what's on your Christmas list and so I want to share with you how I got to this specific scope and then in a later video I'll go into all of the details and, and what I like and what I dislike pertaining to this scope so let's get started with the first scope that didn't work for me. The Red Cat 51, and specifically I'm going to compare it to the, uh, the latest model, the upgraded one, or Red Cat 51 II. The reason why I didn't go for that particular telescope is because my primary um, focus, or to use a bad pun, my primary focus was I was looking for focal length. I wanted that reach. Now, the Red Cat 51 uh, upgraded version, it's an amazing telescope, and I'll say right off the bat, William Optics generates some incredible telescopes, and you're not going to go wrong with any of them. They're solidly built, they're quality products, but you need to find the flavor that's going to work for you. So, the Red Cat 51, one of the things that I really liked about it is that it comes with a built-in uh, field rotator. And what that means is when you're trying to orient your camera due to the horizontal versus the vertical, it's built in to be able to rotate. On this one here, the Zenith Star 81, that's a separate piece that you have to purchase and put into your you know, alignment of equipment. So the 51, the upgraded one, comes with that field rotator. And then one of the other things that I thought was absolutely amazing on it is it has a camera sensor tilt adjuster. And the idea is, is that as the image is coming through, you want the plane of your sensor to be squared to that image that's coming through. You don't want any tilt. And apparently, um, they have this adjuster in there to help get that squared up. And... It's an amazing product. I loved everything about it, but my primary focus, there's that bad pun again, was focal length. The Red Cat 51 comes in at a focal length of 250 millimeters, and while that's great for wide field images of some of the larger nebula, for myself, I'm more than happy to do that with the glass that I have, the lenses we already own, for those wider field images, because I'm not zoomed in as much, um, I don't find the degradation in the image so much using my camera lenses. Now, I'm not going to try and say that a scope, or excuse me, that a camera lens can compete with a telescope, but 
I'm happy with what a camera lens will generate. And again, I'm after focal length, so I passed on that. Now, if it's uh, if you have the money and you're interested, the uh, Red Cat 51 upgraded comes in at uh, at the time of this video at $843 approximately, depending on where you're looking. But the focal length just wasn't there for me. So let's move on to the next option. So the Zenith SAR 61 is uh, one of the, the big benefits that I saw is it's really the price leader that jumps out. As I was looking around across the web and doing a bit of research prior to this video, the Zenith Star 61 from William Optics is coming in at a price of $592. And so with the price of scope, uh, telescopes, or OTAs as people refer to them, somebody will probably comment to that in the, uh, the comments. But anyway, um, in regards to the price of telescopes, uh, at $592, that's really the, the best bang for buck that I came across. Now, with that, the thing you have to keep in mind is that on unlike the Red Cat 51, on the Zenith Star 61, they do recommend a field flattener because when you put a full-frame camera on it, you're going to get that distortion of the stars out at the corners. Sure, you can crop that off, and the field flattener off the top of my head, and I'll, I'll put it on the screen here, but it was a little over $200, but that'll flatten it out. Now, again, going back to my intention, focal length, the Z61 is coming in a focal length of 360 millimeters. So again, I wanted more, I passed on that one, but bang for buck, Zenith Star 61 was awesome at 592 and then, uh, like I said, if you're going to use the full frame, you're going to want to consider getting that uh, field flattener unless you're okay with cropping down. And again, that could also be target dependent. So let's move on to the next option. The Zenith Star 73 is another great telescope. We're getting into those longer focal lengths. Uh, focal length on the Zenith Star 73 is 430. So now I finally started to arrive into that area where, again, I'm looking for focal length. Um, price, $713 is what I was finding at it, approximately, depending on the vendor, but about that price for a focal length of 430. And again, you'll need a field flattener for that particular scope if you are, again, looking to shoot with a full frame. Um, it's, it's a good solid scope, but I wanted to see, could I go further? Now, as we're zeroing in on this, uh, Xenostar 81, I was also keeping in mind the weight limit. And again, the Skyguider Pro has a max weight of 11 pounds. I mentioned that one specifically, Star Adventure does as well, but I mentioned that because that's what I shoot with. So I had to take that into account. Now, ideally, general thinking is, is don't go over three quarters of the weight allowance just to have that solid tracking, but I'm willing to push it. And so looking at the Z81, I'm not exceeding yet. So I decided to move on and look at that one. So here we go. We're at the Zenith Star 81 or Z81. This one has a focal length of 559 millimeters as opposed to the Zenith Star 73 that had the 430. Now, these are um, these were both really good options for me. And the reason being is, is because on the Zenith Star 73, the field flattener that they recommend for it does not reduce the focal length of the scope. And so it's 430, add in the field flattener, you're still at 430. On the Zenith Star 81, though, the way they have this one set up is that your flattener is combined with a reducer. And this combination drops you from the 559 millimeter focal length down to 447. So we're only talking about 17 millimeters of difference between the Zenith Star 73 and the Zenith Star 81. So there's not a whole lot. Now, there is an option for the Zenith Star 81 to get a field flattener that does not reduce your focal length. However, off of the top of my head, 
um, that field flattener was somewhere over $600 for it, where the Zenith Star 73 flattener only was a little over 200 The Zenith Star 81 combo of a field flattener and reducer was a little over $200. So you're almost really pushed into having to get that reducer flattener because for myself, I'm looking at the price of just the exclusive flattener and I'm not willing to pay 600, you know, a little over $600 for just that flattener. So between those two, because as I just said, they're very similar. Why did I end up here? Okay. Um, oftentimes the targets that I'm shooting with my full frame are going to be with my Astro modded camera. So therefore, with the field flattener and the reducer, I'm okay with that and losing the focal length down to the 447 because of the fact that I can shoot wider to capture some of the smaller nebula because oftentimes you're not going to be shooting some of those nebulas at 447 millimeters. But I can still shoot with my full frame with the reducer flattener at 440, 447 millimeters, that works for me. But the reason why I wanted the focal length was for some of those small targets that are out there, and those small targets tend to be your galaxies, not the nebulas. And so this was my thinking. I went with the focal length of the 559. When I shoot the, those tiny little galaxies, I'm actually going to jump over to my crop sensor camera, and with that crop factor, it really cuts out a lot of that distortion that happens on the full frame. So while I still have to do a little bit of trimming down, the crop factor kind of takes care of that distortion. And so um, with that 559 millimeters, crop factor of 1.5 on a Nikon camera, that's taking me out uh, somewhere around, and I'll put it on the screen, but somewhere around 800 millimeters in total focal length with that crop sensor. So I could shoot using this, I could stay under the maximum weight limit, and I could go after those small targets, which was why I was looking for focal length. Additionally, one of the things that I have in mind for in the future is to look at one of the early Nikon, I think it was called the uh, the J1, but anyways, it was Nikon's early foray into mirrorless cameras, and they could be picked up for less than 100 bucks for the camera. I think it's like uh, 38 bucks to get the T-ring slash adapter to attach, and then I can, because of the size of that sensor, I can get some ridiculous reach out of it. So I have this long-term goal of where I'm going with this. So... For me, with the weight limit and what I'm looking to do and not using the field flattener reducer, which will add weight to this combo, I can still reasonably make it under the limit of the Sky Guider, get that reach that I wanted, and the clarity that a scope will give you over our lenses for those tiny targets. For the larger targets that are closer at the wider focal length, I'm more than happy with camera lenses. So... There you go, with Christmas coming up, if you're going to put a uh, telescope on your list, those are some points to consider as to what you're looking to go after. Because I want reach, I need that best clarity I can get for those tiny galaxies, where on the wider end, I am more than happy with my lenses and what they can do for me. Again, I'm not going to try and compare, you know, say that a lens could be as good as a scope, but I'm happy with it on the wider end. So, if you like the content of this video and what you saw here and what we do, please consider liking the video, ringing the bell, subscribing, and share the video out. And lastly, I would love to see you over at our Facebook group, AstroVenture DSLR, where you can continue the conversation with other like-minded astrophotographers. And until next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.